So let's go to Lord prayer. Lord, we just lift these up to you. We thank you for that you're moving and working in people's lives. Lord, continue, God, those who need a touch from you, uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, whatever it is they need financially, God. There's so much going on. And Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters around the world, God, that are suffering for your namesake. Lord, that are watching their children be killed in front of their faces, that are being raped, and tortured, and abused. And you don't love us any more than them. They're your children, Lord God. Lord, help us to realize how blessed we are and help us never to forget to pray for those that are suffering and lord come go with us now to this lesson lord give us uh, open hearts and minds i pray god somebody take hold of this deal and it would change lives and souls would be saved give me the ability to deliver this in a way that's pleasing to you in jesus name amen, amen. all right this is going to be the third part of our uh part about raising children in a biblical marriage uh, and we'll do just a, if we have time, I don't know if we'll have time, we'll do a small review when we get to the end of this. Uh, but up here, come in, come in, come in. But this is the theme of this today. How much are you willing to gamble with the souls of your children? Now think about that for a minute. How much are you willing to gamble with a soul? You trying to say, brother? We gamble with our children all the time from a physical standpoint. I mean, we gamble with the lives of our children all the time. That's okay. Because you know what? You can't just put them in a bubble and never let them do anything. Whenever you let your kids, like whenever we let Thomas and them, they go run off to the creek and swim in the pond and do all this, that, and the other unsupervised, I mean, you're taking a chance. They could drown. They could die. Even getting out on the road and going somewhere is a, a, a chance, okay? So you, 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 you gamble with the lives of your children all the time. And there is a line, right? I mean, hopefully you got a line. Hopefully, you know, you're not... Uh, you know, letting the kids loose in the house when they're toddlers and you got poison laying around and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's a line. There is a line. But you can also gamble with their soul. Now, make no mistake about it. You, if you have had children and you raised them and they're gone, or if you got children in the home, you're gambling with their souls. And you need to understand that. Because there's eternal consequences of the soul deal. There can be eternal consequences of gambling with their lives. Uh, you know, Oliver's a little bit more willing to gamble the lives of my children than I am. <laughs> Isn't that right, Thomas? <laughs> Letting y'all raft down that overflowed river. But, but no, that's what we want to talk about is what you do and how you live has, can have a direct impact on where your child is going to spend eternity. A billion years in after their death, they're screaming at the top of their lungs, burning in the devil's hell like a torch. Now, that's the reality. That is the reality. And so that's the question. What are you willing to gamble with the souls of your children? Because I'm going to tell you what. This whole biblical marriage thing, it requires sacrifice, don't it? It requires sacrifice. You giving up some things in order to make this happen. Now, if you want to raise your children biblically, you're going to have to do some sacrificing, I'm telling you. Amen. The question is how much you're willing to do. And everybody's got a different line. Just like everybody's got a different line of how much risk they're willing to take with their kids doing this, that, and the other. Some people are super protective. And, and you can be too protective and shelter them too much. And I mean, by golly, they don't have no kind of life. They can't get along out there without you. Because you go too far the other way, too. And so where's the balance? You know how you're going to find a balance? If you yourself, as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, is walking in the light and being led by the Spirit, you'll show where the balance is. You get off in the world and living for the world, you'll know where that's going to lead you and where it's going to lead your kids. All right, everybody get a handout. Anybody need a handout? Can you grab us one? Yeah. Please. Anybody else? Y'all need one or two. Oh, you got one. Anybody else? All right. Okie dokie. 
you, you're all going to get some preaching. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. You're going to get some preaching this morning. Might get some opinion. Might get some opinion this morning. Now, I do think my opinion is when I throw it out there, I'm not going to try to give you any opinion that it's not based on work. But, you know, opinion is opinion. You know, So uh, you might get a little bit of that. And so the first one is this. How can you protect your child from the demonic world we're living in? What, what did I tell you? We need, we need to be operating under one reality. And that is you are what? Deceived. As you are sitting right here in these chairs, you're deceived. And if you don't got your mind wrapped around that, then you're going to miss it. You can be in that word every day. You can study it every day. I try to I study this word every day. And I'm in it, and I pray, and I do all that, and I'm deceived. And you're deceived. And why is that? Why is that? Somebody read. Let's skip to uh, Luke 4, 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and your glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. So this is the devil talking to Jesus. Now, did Jesus say he was a liar right then? No, he confirmed what the devil is saying. True. What did it say? It said, what kingdoms? What kingdoms? All of them. All of them. Circle it right there if you got a pen. All the kingdoms of the world are under his control. Do you think this United States is a righteous nation? No. You think the United Nations is righteous? No. What about church denominations? No. How about that? How about the Baptist denomination or the Methodist or the Pentecost? Do you think they're righteous? All the kingdoms of the world. All of them. Now listen. These kingdoms, these institutions can have righteous people in them. Praise God. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? I mean, born again believers in Jesus Christ that are, that are in these systems that may be even running these systems, passing the laws. You can have righteous laws. Hey, you know, this country, when it was founded, they had a whole lot more righteous people in the government than they do now. And we passed a lots of righteous laws. But if you think for a second that Satan ain't controlled by all of that, well, you got another thing coming. You're deceived. See, you're deceived. We all are. And that's the whole point. But Satan said to Jesus, I will give you all of them if you will worship me. He had them to give. He still got them to give. They belong to him. Why do they belong to him? Y'all remember what happened in the garden? Adam gave them to him, didn't he? Adam gave Satan all the kingdoms of the world. Adam was a king. Y'all remember that? When we covered that, Adam was a king. God created him, had dominion over all the earth. And he gave it up. And who did he give it to? Give it to the devil. And the devil still got it. Now Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord our God. Jesus is coming again. And he will take those kingdoms away from the devil. But right now, you need to understand that all the kingdoms and the systems of the world are under what? Somebody read 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So even these institutions that could have started out as a good thought, whether it be a church denomination, whether it be our constitutional republic as it was founded, it is always going to be corrupted because it is under the sway of the wicked one. Somebody read Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. <laughs> Demons are real. They are real and they're everywhere. They are in your house. They follow you around. They follow your children around. They know everything about you. They can speak every language on the planet. You can have generational demons that are passed down and they can mess with you and derail you and they can possess you and they can oppress you. 
And you can invite them into your life. Right now, every one of you people sitting in this room are inviting demons into your life one way or another, myself included. Especially if you don't, if you don't live in a supernatural worldview. If you don't get up in the morning and realize that there are entities all around you. And they are out for your destruction. And you also have entities around you that are out for your protection. And there is a war being waged. The unseen realm, it is all around you. And if your eyes could be open at any moment, it would freak you out. I mean, you'd lose your mind. you just go crazy. And we see this. We talk about this, you know, whenever uh, 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 Elijah asked for, Elisha asked for the Lord to open the eyes of his servant. Saw what all was going on. You got to know this. And we're talking about in the context of your children now. And what's going on with them? Because Satan wants your children. Yes. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, he cannot have your soul, but he can wreck your life out. But by golly, he wants the souls of your children. Yes. And you know what? How you live and what you do in front of them is going to have a direct result about whether they, where they can go. Yes. Now, don't think. Don't think because you know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you take your children to church, they're going to go to heaven. Yes. Oh, most of those folks are going to go to heaven. Is that shocking? No. Narrow. Narrow, 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 narrow is the gate, and broad, broad, broad is the road. And you need to be aware of that, because everything you do, everything you do, is going to direct your children one way or the other. One way or the other. It's serious business. Somebody read Ephesians 2, 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So he tells us right now, we're talking about Satan and the prince of the power of the air. We operate under him. Before you knew the Lord Jesus Christ, you were you, you belong to him. You're a child of death. You understand that? And once your children reach the age of accountability, if they're not born again, they're a child of death too. That kind of draws you up, don't it? And so, and so we, we used to walk that way. The question is, are you still walking that way in front of your children? Are you? Are you still walking according to the prince of the power there in front of your children? Most people do. Because most people don't have a biblical marriage. You know, this is all under the context of a biblical marriage. Number two. How much, here we are, are you willing to gamble with the souls of your children? Because I'm telling you, guys, brethren, brothers and sisters, what you do, what you say, where you take your children, what you expose them to, all has a direct impact on where they're going to spend eternity. Never been of it. Never been of it. And so it's going to require some sacrifice on your part if you care about the souls of your children. You're going to have to give up some things that you may like to do and you may find joy in and pleasure in if you care about the souls of your children. Now, it's going to be tough. Now, I'm telling you from now on out, y'all ain't going to like this deal. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't do these things. Did I tell y'all that before? This and this. I needed somebody to teach me this lesson when my children were little. I needed it. I needed somebody to kick my tail up one side and down the other, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So I'm talking to me. Don't sit here and think that I did all this. Because I didn't. So it's going to require sacrifice. Somebody read 1 Corinthians 10, 23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are edify. Let no one seek his own, let each one the other's well-being. Let no one seek his own. And now we're talking about our children. Now that, that right context is even broader than that. Boy, it gets even broader than that. But if we are not willing to sacrifice for the souls of our children, who, I mean, what kind of people are we, man? See, there are some things that aren't sin, we're going to talk about this, that can still lead your children to hell. 
you know that? Aren't saying that if you're going to indulge in them and participate in them, that in and of themselves might not be sin, they're going to have a direct impact on your children. Because a lot of people use that as an excuse. Well, there ain't nowhere in the Bible that it says this or that or the other mm -hmm. thing, and so therefore it's okay. That's not true. We back back up there, and I'll read it. So, uh, Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to man, but it's in, in the end, it's the way of death. It could be your death, or it could be the death of your children. So there's a way that seems right. And that's what the world has got you. You know, if you bought into the philosophies of how to raise children in the, in the way of this world, modern psychology, and modern self-help, and all of that garbage, 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 self-esteem and, 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 and all of that nonsense that they push on our children today in schools. You bought into all that, man, you're already on the wrong path. There's a way that seems right to man to end thereof is death. Why? Because it's not based on this book. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Somebody read that. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the foods are in the stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both of it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So this tells us, look, uh, there are some things that are not unlawful for you to do in your liberty in Christ, okay? Uh, you got a lot of liberty in Christ. You know, you're, you're not going to hell. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't buy your way into hell. You belong to God. You're a part of his body. You think Jesus is going to leave a part of his body in hell? Now, he'll kill you. He'll make you sick, he'll make you weak, and he'll kill you. Don't think for a second God won't kill you if you're his child. He will let you mess around forever. But you ain't going to hell. But your children go to hell. They can go to hell. Quick. Real quick. And so what we need to do is we don't we need to think about our liberty in Christ and we need to ask ourselves how is our liberty in Christ infecting our children? We're already saved. But your children aren't. Hopefully they are, but they might not be. Now let me tell you right now, y'all y'all gals that are carrying little ones in your bellies and you're holding them right here. Now look, uh, the children are, are, are good until their age of accountability. We don't worry about the souls of our children that die before they know uh, right from wrong and know that they need a Savior. Boy, once they get up to that, whew, man, I'm not going to put an age on it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, man, right along in there. Boy, you better get serious if we hadn't, if we hadn't come, uh, come to know the Lord. But we, we need to think about what we're doing. And we don't need to. Re we need to remember that just because something might not be actually spelled out as sin in the Bible, we need to ask ourselves, where is it pointing our children? So, see where I'm at here. All right, here we go. Here is a big one. Psalm 103.3. Somebody read that and you're going to regret reading it. <laughs> I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not please me. I will set no wicked thing in front of my eyes. I'm going to bet everything. You can, hey, somebody, you correct me if I'm wrong. I bet every one of you sitting in here has an altar to Satan in your house. And it's the centerpiece of your life. That's not always used as an altar of, to Satan, but that's what it is. Do you think for a second that exposing your children to secular TV is not putting them on a direct path to the devil's hell? Anybody want to argue with that? There is not one redeeming show that you will ever see on, 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 on television. It all. It can, it can couch itself in righteousness, even those shows that uh, can maybe come across, you look at what they're about. You look at what they involve. 
You look at what they glorify. There ain't one, you know, I, I, and of course we watch TV, and I, I used to love watching TV, and we'd watch movies, you know, those romantic comedies. Man, I used to laugh at them. That Matthew McConaughey guy, man, he's so funny. And, and all of that garbage. You know what I wished on all Hollywood movies? I wish that after the movie was over, they would just give you five minutes of them screaming at the top of their lungs, burning in a devil's hell. Then you wouldn't laugh, would you? It wouldn't be funny. It wouldn't be funny, all this fornication and screwing around and, and cheating and, and, and killing and stealing and all of this other stuff. No, it wouldn't be funny. It wouldn't be funny. I still one time, Jeff Bishop, and then you know what? My favorite, my favorite uh, movie ever made was Lonesome Dove, and I could, I could, I could guarantee you, I could quote you every word in that movie. I could, I could quote you every word, every line. I could speak right along with. It. And I was talking to Jeff Bishop. Jeff Bishop used to, more he loved that movie too. And he, I asked Jeff one day. I said, "What do you, what, what do you think Gus is doing right now? He's screaming. He's screaming at the top of his lung, man, burning like a torch. I mean, figuratively. I mean, he wasn't a real guy, but I mean." We're all them guys in hell. In hell. Hollywood. Oh my goodness. If you're bringing that crap into your house and putting it in front of your your children, uh, you just prime them. You know, we talked about how to invite demons into your life. I'm gonna tell you right there. You're gonna invite them demons into your life right there. You're inviting them into your home. You can invite demons into your own with all kinds of things. Books, <coughs> pictures you got on the wall, stuff you got hanging around. Oh, man. Yeah, you can invite demons into your house. I've been in houses of Christian people. They'll have them skulls. You see them skulls, you know, on the back picture cars and all that stuff? Hey, demonic. You're inviting demons, man. You're inviting them into your house. Books, sorcery, witchcraft. Oh, don't think that you are not magnet. You're opening the door wide for them things. Internet. We're going to talk about these things whenever we get to the kids. I'm talking about you guys right now. I'm talking about what you watch and what you listen to. You don't think that you are inviting demons into your house and life and in the lives of your kids if you're rolling down the road and you're pumping out secular music into their ears? Now, look, I know this is not a popular message right here. But I'm telling you the truth. And if you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, your spirit is testifying right now in your soul that I'm telling you the truth. Now, what are you doing about it? That's the question. I didn't do what I needed to do. What are you willing to sacrifice for the souls of your children? Are you willing to be a fanatic? Because that's what we're talking about here. If you want to have a biblical marriage, you're a fanatic. You're an outcast. You're crazy. You're not modern. You're not progressive. And you're going to get ridiculed right to the core by your family, by your friends, by your co-workers, even by your church friends. They will ridicule you if you're going to have a biblical marriage. And they will ridicule you if you care enough about the souls of your children to raise them biblically. It's such a huge temptation just to do what the world does. Let's just do what everybody else does. It'll be all right. Hey, that's between you and the Lord. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. What you do with it is between you and Almighty God. But I'm talking about what are you doing? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you filling your life with? Where are you going? Who are you hanging around with? And your kids are just soaking it up like a sponge, man. They're soaking it up like a sponge. And you could talk all day long to your blue in the face. They're going to watch what you do. And they're going to listen. And they're smart. Oh, boy, they, they, they will rat you out in a heartbeat. Hypocrite. I was. Boy, I was the biggest hypocrite there ever walked. My children knew it. They don't pay attention to what he says. He don't live it. He don't live it. Read Proverbs 4, 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Where are you taking your children? Where are you loading them up in your vehicle and carrying them to? 
And what are they exposed to? Are you going in the path of the wicked? Are you taking them to the path of the wicked? Man, I'm going to tell you what. That, my, my, I guarantee you most things, and it's just such a sad deal because most things that are geared towards children are, are, are really just a, a demonic ploy to get them sucked into something. Just look at the advertising. That's the reason. That reason right there is enough to throw the set, uh, the television antenna, cut it off, just take you one of them uh, reciprocating saws and just cut that thing <laughs> off right there at the bottom, let it fall, and then take you a pair of snippers and cut that cord that goes to your satellite. Oh my goodness! I gotta watch my football games. Somebody read 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Who are you hanging around with? Who are your friends? <clears throat> Who are your friends? Now look, we got family and we can't do nothing about our family. All right, I mean, you just, but, but here's what you can do. You can let your children know the truth. You can let your children know the truth. Uncle Johnny's going to burn in the devil's hell. We need to be praying for him. They need to know. We don't do that. We don't talk that way. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't go these places. We don't do those things. You're talking to your children. And you can't, you, I would never say cut yourself off from your family. I mean, well, I guess there can become a point of that. Mm -hmm. But who are you hanging around? Who are you taking your children around? What do they let, you know, you might be working one way and operating one way in front of your children. If your best friend is, is just, uh, you know, living completely apart from the Lord, what do your children think? Hmm, must be all right. Dad, mom, you know, they're okay with this. Who are you, who are you hanging around? Good, uh, uh, evil company corrupts good care. You will. I'm telling you, you hang around wicked folks and by golly, they're going to get you. You're, you're already predisposed to wickedness. You know, we live in flesh. So we already are predisposed to wickedness. Now you get around somebody else that promotes that, and guess what? It makes it that much easier to go down that path. All right, let's move on. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.22. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace in those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. All right, some of you guys are young in here. And you know what? This fleeing for youthful lust deal, sometimes it takes a little while. And, you know, there are older people that are still, I mean, believe me, chasing youthful lusts. But but you gotta you need to get that thing sorted out while your kids are little. Don't do like me, man, and wait till your kids are grown before you get all that figured out. Now don't be chasing that garbage for pleasure, for pleasure at the at the cost. Right here. So so there there are youthful lusts. These are things we desire, we crave, you know, that and, and that, again, there's a lot of that stuff that might not be sin in and of itself, but, uh, but, but you flee from all of that, the desire of all of that for the sake of your children. 1 Thessalonians 5.2, abstain from every form of evil. All right, I, I need to wrap this up on you because we need to talk about parents. I'm going to read this last one. Romans 14.21. Um, it is, and it's just talking about our freedom how our freedom can hurt somebody else. So we're not talking about sin here. We're talking about freedom. It, it, is, it is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine or do anything by which your brother stumbles or offended to make weak. The context of this is our child, right? So whatever we're doing, if it's going to make our child stumble, we need to stop doing it, whether it's sin or not. There's a lot of stuff you can do to make your child stumble that's not sin. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. That means if you have, you have liberty to do some things, that you're not going to expose your children to. Don't do it. It doesn't mean that necessarily you have to not do it, but if it's not going to be beneficial to your children, don't do it in front of them. Now, I'm not talking about living a secret life now. I ain't talking about that. I don't believe in family secrets, by the way. There are some things that, that, that children are not old enough to know what's going on, but family secrets, are a they are the devil's playground, mm -hmm. man. If you've done something or something that's out there that they're going to find out sooner or later, by God, as soon as they're old enough to appropriately know, you need to let them know. Whatever wicked thing you've done or whatever, what, and do not hide that. It will come out. 
It'll eat you up and it'll eat them up. But some things that are going to cause your children to stumble, you may could participate in those things, but just don't bring them along. Happy is he who does not condemn himself for what he approves. And that gives you a warning right there. Just because you think something not sin, it might be. You better study this book right here. You better study this book. If you think something, if you have the inkling that something you're doing might not be quite right, you need to look what that book says. Because you might think you're in liberty, but really you're sinning. But he who doubts condemns if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. And so what are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of your children? I'll leave that with you. Okay, let's look at this third one. What does a godly life of a godly parent look like? I'm going to read this. We're going to roll through this. This is what, if you want to be the greatest influence on your children and give them the greatest chance of spending eternity in a God's heaven instead of burning like a torch in a devil's hell, this is what our life needs to look like. Now, there's a lot of places in the Bible you can go to look at what a Christian life ought to look like. I just pulled this one out. Therefore, put away lying. Let each of you speak the truth to his neighbor. There is no such thing as a white lie. Let me tell you this, y'all. There is no such thing as a white lie. Not to make somebody feel good. Not to some, get yourself out of a crack. Not to cover from somebody. Here's where I see a lot of lying. Here's where I see Christians lie a lot. Somebody else's tail is in a crack. And they'll lie to keep them out. Do not lie about anything. If you can't not tell a lie, don't say anything. You keep your mouth shut. Now that can be of omission too, but I'm just telling you, do not lie. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie to anybody and do not lie to your children. I'm going to tell you what. I'm, I'm going I'm to let me preach to you a minute. Thomas, when you were a little bitty and you come to me and you ask me, is Santa Claus real? What did I tell you? No. No. Santa Claus ain't real. You know, I see Christian parents, and I look, forgive me if this is you, but I see Christian parents will go all out of their way to lie to their children to make them believe in something that ain't real. And then, whenever they get seven or eight years old, they're like, what the heck? Y'all been hiding stuff and going around and deceiving me? Let me tell you what, that Santa Claus deal, I'm not saying to sin to have Santa Claus, but let me tell you what, that, that dude led more people toward the devil than, than Jesus ever about the Christmas deal. Do not lie. Do not lie for the sake of anything. Do, uh, it says be angry and do not sin. Now that, that acknowledges we're going to get mad, right? We are going to get mad. We're going to get mad at each other. We're going to get you're going to get, Wives, you're going to get mad at your husbands. Husbands, you're going to get mad at your wives. You're going to get mad at your children. But what does it say? Do not sin. So you can be mad and not sin. It's not a sin to get mad. Not a sin to be angry. But how you handle yourself. And we talked about that in the discipline. When we said, you know, the Bible commanded us to beat our children. I hope you beat your children. I hope you do. If you, need, if you weren't here for that, then go back and watch that because we need to, we need to turn what does beat mean. But you don't uh, but you don't sin when you do it. <coughs> and that'll give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, rather let him work, labor with his hands for what is good. You work. Let me tell you what, you don't you, if you you know there comes a time when you might need some help from somebody and there'll be somebody there, but you work. You work and you tend to your business and you take care of your family. Matter of fact, the Word of God says, He that does not take a care of his family is worse than an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. So you need to work. You need to provide. You don't wait on the government to give you a handout. Now, look, you get in the bind and you, you, you got to take advantage of a safety net. You don't, you don't stay there long. By God, you get, you, get, you get to work because uh, you're commanded to. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Woo, man. <laughs> Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Now, we usually think of that as cussing. That's, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer, you know. Uh, you, you know, your children, they're going to pick up on that. But I mean, you, you I'm going to tell you what. You can just be, uh, have the best language anybody ever, and you get mash your a thumb with a hammer or you do something and you let out a cuss word, guess what the kid is going to remember more than all of everything else? They're going to remember that cuss word. 
That's what they're going to remember. That takes some training, by the way. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, I used to cuss like before I come to the Lord. I mean, it's just like an F in this every three or four times in every sentence, you know, and all that. And then whenever I got saved, I mean, the Lord cleaned my language up pretty good, but it takes some time, you know. I mean, when you talk that way, I mean, it, but you need to be conscious of it. Well, especially when you got little ones, man. They're going to they're gonna take that in, boy. Uh, do not grieve the Holy Spirit and... Uh, uh, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God has forgiven you. That's the what your life needs to look like uh, when you're uh, raising your children. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, we're gonna get some sacred cows right here too. What are areas of life that are directly under Satan's control that you're exposing your children to? Now, I gave y'all some deals right there, but let's just look at these. Secular television. There is absolutely no way if I had a child in the home, I would have secular television on my television. I would not do it. I would not do it. I would not do it. Now, that's between you and God, but I would not. <laughs> There is absolutely nothing on there that is going to lead them towards the cross of Jesus Christ. All going to lead them away, especially cartoons. If you are letting your children watch secular cartoons, you are giving them to the devil. Somebody, somebody argue with that, especially these modern ones. Mm -hmm. You know, the older cartoons. You know, I mean, it, you know, some of them maybe you got to, you got to. Uh, modern, you got to monitor them and all that. Let me tell you, what, these modern cartoons are demonic. They are satanic. That SpongeBob dude, <laughs> Thomas, and used to watch him. You talk about right out of the pit of hell, man. And in, 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 in children's literature, these movies that are geared toward children, they're all satanic, demonic. Matter of fact, they wrap the, the they wrap witchcraft as something good. They call an evil good and good evil. And priming your children to accept the darker things as they get older. Books, Hollywood movies, garbage. Every single one of them garbage. Especially movies that target children. You see what Disney's doing? They're pumping that demonic sexual agenda. And they've been doing that for years, by the way. They've been doing it for years. My kids, we all watched all the Disney movies because I'm just as deceived as everybody else because it's cartoons and it's funny. And the, No, they're all full of hidden message. Just go do the search. Just search the internet and say documentaries of, of Disney cartoons, hidden messages. And you just and it's right there, plain. I mean, once you once your eyes get open to this good stuff, and we've been handing our children to the devil. Secular music, this is huge. I guarantee you, man. And I mean, look, I, 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 I'm just I'm saying. What you do uh, is sin might be for you, a sin for me, maybe not. You know, I mean, we know the Word of God says that. What sin for one might be for the other. Now, now if it's directly against this book, it's sin for anybody. But I guarantee you, man, every one of these radios is out here and all these vehicles out here. If I punched all of the dials, I guarantee you what I'm going to come up with 90% of the time is secular music. Demonic, secular music. And I don't care what genre, pick your genre. Country, you think country is righteous? I, you know, they'll throw Jesus or God in a song or two, won't they? Boy, they sure like to masquerade around over in uh, in Nashville like they're, they're some kind of religious deal. What is it all glorifying? Fornication, adultery, drunkenness, revelry, pagan. It's all demonic. It's all demonic. Rock and roll. Boy, I'm going to tell you what them dudes sell their soul to the devil. Yeah. If you're a rock and roll, I was a big rock and roller, man. I could sing every lyric of every song from probably 1950 all the way up to 19, uh, you know, early 90s. Boy, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, man. I mean, Van Halen, all that, you know, good, you know, Guns and Roses, all that stuff. I could sing it all, man. You know all them guys sold their soul to the devil? And they'll tell you. I want to challenge you if you're a rock and roller to get on YouTube and look up they sold their soul for rock and roll. 
And, and this guy, Good Fight Ministries, did documentaries on all the bands, the Eagles and all them guys. And they will tell you they have sold their soul to the devil. And they got the music from the devil, not just the words. They get the music from the devil. They would give it to them in dreams or when they were tripping on drugs. But yeah, man. Uh, drugs, and it's not yeah. just somebody saying, hey, they sold their souls to the devil. They, the singers themselves, tell you. In the documentary, that is what they did. Jimi Hendrix, a lot of his music, that a, a demon wrote him. Yeah. He didn't know what he was writing. That's the way a lot of them guys get their song, Demon Writes a Poem. Wild stuff, but real and true, and that's what you're pumping in, if that's what you're listening to. Secular advertising, man, they're targeting your children, whether it be on television or on that mobile phone. And I, and I tell you what, that mobile phone, I'm going to tell you what, this right here. There is absolutely no way in the world I'd have my children have one of these things until they was a teenager. And then I would have them so afraid of this thing, I would tell them, that I, I would, I would, this is full of demonic. You, I'm going to tell you, I've said this before, if your children have one of these, I don't care how old they are, if they have one of these and they take it to school, guess what? They have watched humans having sex with animals. Every single one of them. If your child has one of these, they've watched humans having sex with animals. They've watched humans, adults having sex with children, children having sex with each other. Every single one of them, you got one of these in your hand. Because I'm going to tell you what, you can have every parental control imaginable on this phone. And guess what? Little Johnny at school don't. He don't. Now this thing right here, this thing right here can do a lot of good. I use it for the study of the Word of God, and I use it to get my information. I look the news on it. I do a lot of things on it. But I want to tell you what. This is too dangerous for your children to have in their hand. And you know what? If you're sitting in front of that thing all day long while your children are in the house and they're looking at you, you know what they're going to want? They're going to want one. And this is what I see with parents and Christian parents. You can believe what I'm saying. You can believe that I'm saying that this thing is the most dangerous thing that ever came up. It is. It is the most dangerous. It might be the most helpful, but it is the most dangerous thing. And if you're sitting on the couch and you and mama are sitting there looking at that thing 24-7, your kids are in the floor watching you, they're not going to be scared of this thing. This is where you're not going. I must tell you, I'm going to make a prophecy right here. Just kidding. I bet you don't give it up. I bet you don't. I bet you stay on this thing in front of your kids. I'm on it all the time. I, I don't know if I would. I hope I would. I hope I'd think about this right here. That's worth everything right there, man. That's worth everything. I'm not saying to get rid of that thing. I ain't saying to get rid of that thing. But you need to make your children afraid of this thing. And if they see you in it all the time, they're not going to be scared of it. Years ago, they called the internet the devil's highway. Yeah. Everything, every modern technology, no matter how good it is, who's it under the control of? The devil. A devil. Uh, modern medicine. Modern medicine. Man, praise God. I got kidney stones. Man, I don't know if any of y'all ever had a kidney stone. You have. Uh, man, they're they're terrible. I, I just hate to think, of, you know, a 70 years ago having a kidney stone without modern medicine. Or cancer. Or all of these things. But you know what? They are melding humans and animals now. There's human-animal hybrids right now, alive, right now. I told you all that before. You know, in this country, we've got to kill them things before they're so many days old. You think they're killing them in China, in mm -hmm. Russia? Whenever they put human DNA in rats and hogs, there's human hog hybrids right now. I don't know. I mean, can you imagine? They don't kill them over there. You, you, you can look at Have y'all ever seen a rat with a human ear on his back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah do that. Have you seen, you've seen that, haven't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. man. They can get these, they put human DNA and they can get that, you know, a rat. Just look at a human ear on his back. There's all kinds of stuff they can do. Scare you to death. So, so all technology can be used for good, but it's under the sway of who? Of the devil. Explicit violent video. Why in the world do you think we got all these kids killing people? 
They've, you know what? The average kid is killed over a million people before he gets to the age of 16 on that, on that computer. Killing them all the time, man. Getting points for them. Getting points for killing them. And so they get so desensitized. And so, so a kid, a, a, a normal kid that is growing and that's living in a good, stable home and he has a grasp on reality, he might not go out and kill he might be able to differentiate, is it good? That's a whole other ar argument. But he might be able to say, well, this is just a game or whatever. But some ain't, you know, most kids aren't aren't coming out of a stable environment. Mm -hmm. It's just killing, man. That, the human life ain't worth nothing. Well, we kill our babies. It's legal to do that. You know, why not kill? Why not kill? Them, them, them violent game, video games and, and, and it's just like television. Man, ain't none of it promote Christ. Show me one that promotes Jesus Christ or put somebody on the path towards the Lord. They ain't there. Here's, the, here's another big one, man, and I'm going to step on some toes right here. Secular education. Man, I was hoping we'd get done with this today. I ain't going to do it. Now, I got a lot of educators in my family. My dad. He spent his life in education, superintendent school, taught school. My sister, she's in education. Mom uh, wasn't a teacher, but she was in the education field. Praise God for godly Christian teachers and Christian educators. But I'm going to tell you who is in control of the education system. Do I need to tell you? You've been at it from the beginning. Because what did we do? We gave our children to the devil whenever we turn them over to the government to teach them. Now look, not everybody can afford homeschooling, not everybody can afford private education or whatever, you know, and I don't know, but there ain't no way in the world I would sacrifice whatever I had to sacrifice myself. This is an opinion now. I would not put my kids in there. Now that's a tough deal right there, and again, it is, uh, I'm not telling you run pull your kids out of the public school I'm going to tell you what, it is a demonic world you turn them over to we talked about this before, they're going to have great hours a day how long are you going to have them for? what did we talk about the, earlier, we said uh, man you're going to get them for an hour in the morning, what are you going to do, be getting them ready for school you know, fixing their lunch and dressing them and all that, you ain't, you ain't going to have no time to do anything, and then you're going to get if you work till 5, even if your kid gets off at 3, you know, you're going to, you're going to get home about 5, 6 o'clock you know, you got to fix supper and you know, do some stuff around the house. And, you know, the kids have got their deal. They've been cooped up in school all day. What are they going to do? They're going to be out playing, running around, being with their friends or whatever. And you're not going to eat at the table. Now, you eat in front of the TV, most of us. So how much time are you really got with your kids? So you've given them to the government. And they're completely exposed to every kind of thing in the world and their, and their, and their, uh, brainwashing them and a lot of stuff. So you would really need to spend at least a couple hours a day undoing everything got poured into the brain during the school day. It's a tough deal. It's a tough deal. And uh and I don't know, uh you gotta you gotta work all that out with the Lord. Uh, uh some people just can't do it. You know, they're just not able to do it. And so if you're not able to do it, you need to know what's going on and you need to offset it. That's what I'm telling you. If you can't pull your kids out, you need to be offsetting what they do. And that means you got to be teaching them yourself. You don't let the, the school do all the teaching. You got to teach them. And I would say, uh, look, even if your kids are in public school, I would get homeschool curriculum, even if you're not homeschooling, so that you will have a foundation that you can talk to your kids about. Like Chloe, she she homeschooled the last few years, of, and, and you know they've got the textbooks and everything. And so when little Johnny or Susie comes home and they're studying this history and they're telling you what the school says, and you say, "Well, let's look at this. Let's see what it, what sort of what really happened." You got to offset that. And here's something being fair about. I asked Oliver about this, uh, and he, I said I didn't want to throw anything out here that would bring any expectations uh, before the due time, and, and I and so. He said to, 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 to be in prayer because the church is exploring, exploring things that we could do to help in this area. I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. But it requires sacrifice. It would require sacrifice. We talked about this earlier. You know, we are so programmed into this demonic American dream that says you need to have uh, 
You need to have a couple of cars, you need to have a big house, you need to be able to go on vacations, and you need to be able to have all the finer things in life. And guess what you got to do to have that? You got to have two incomes, right? Mom and dad both got to work. So you throw biblical marriage out the window. Is what, 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 remember what we talked about, the role of the woman, the role of the man, and all of that early on in this study? So you throw all that out the window to chase American dream. And who's going to suffer? Right there. Satan's got you. He's got you. Because he wants your children. If he can keep you focused on the American dream and he can focus on materialism and money, why do we not have big families anymore? It costs too much money. And it costs sacrifice because you can't go on all the vacation and you can't do the things you want to do because you got all these kids running around. Satan. Man, it's Satan. He's got us deceived. He's got us deceived. I ain't going to get done. Not going to do it. Um, look. This tough teaching right here. I uh, know. And some might say, well, man, you're just trying to make people feel guilty. And and look, I've already told you, I didn't do any of this stuff. Thomas can testify. There's my son right there on the back row. Uh, there's some things I did and some things I didn't. Uh, I wished I could go back, and I can't. Uh, you got choices to make. You folks that are parents, and then I mean, what? If your parent, if your kids are already grown, it ain't too late. Because guess what? My little grandbaby is right back there on the back row. <laughs> you know what? He's gonna be watching me. And you got some grandbabies gonna be watching you. And so if mom and daddy are off the reservation, and they ain't got a clue what biblical marriage is about, hey, there's been a many a kid. There's been many a kid come to the Lord Jesus Christ because of grandma and grandpa. And their family is hell and mom and daddy are hooked on dope or uh, screwing around and been divorced five times and remarried and passed around and every kind of thing in the world. And grandma and grandpa love the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And they're stable and it shows what does it look like to have a biblical marriage and they got something they can look to. But don't count on it. Don't count on that if you can do it yourself because it is much more effective if mom and dad are bought in and they're fanatics for the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't care what the world thinks about you. Because it's all about the souls of your children. <coughs> now, we'll finish this up next week. We're going to talk about uh, how we invite demons into our homes. Uh, and we're, we're, uh, we're, how can, you know, we don't want our kids to be so isolated they can't get along with the world. You know, that's, a, that's like them homeschool like home, like kids. You know what I mean? They get so isolated when they get out. Poo, man, they just they go nuts. So we want to talk about how can we socialize our children safely. They got to be able to get right, get around in the world. They got to know how to handle one of these things. How do we do it safely? Uh, and then we're going to talk about what the cost if you do all this or you don't do all that. And so I don't know. We might not. We might move on to another topic next week. Uh, you, Dave, you had mentioned something about maybe we want to talk about some finances in regards to biblical marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting close to wrapping this thing up. Is there, is there any other topics related to marriage that we haven't covered that y'all want covered? Um, no, uh, do, uh, we could do something on divorce, you know, uh, if we needed to. Uh, but y'all think about this this week. If, uh, if there's something that we haven't covered, uh, and then and then be praying about um, what we're going to go on to next. I haven't quite nailed it down, but I have. I don't know. The Lord may have me go over some heresies. Mm -hmm. You know, the good thing about going over heresies, which is false doctrine, is it makes you figure out what the right doctrine mm -hmm. is. And there's a ton of false doctrines out there, heresies, uh, you, you know, whether it be Calvinism or Catholicism or Mormonism or, you know, uh, uh, you just... Uh, take your pick. Uh, some of them are deadly, and some of them are just wrong, and it'll lead you to uh, the wrong path. Uh, but anyway, y'all be in prayer about that. Any questions? Let me pray for you.
Lord God, I Lord, Lord, I know this was a tough deal, and I don't know where everybody is, and I just pray, God, you speak to their hearts right now. And uh, Lord, forgive me for uh, not living up to your standards, but Lord, I pray for these that, that are here, whether they be grandparents or new parents or parents with teenagers or wherever they are, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you'd show them exactly what they can do to give their children the best chance they can have. And Lord, if there's something that needs to be sacrificed and it may be hard to let go, I pray, God, you'd give them the ability uh, to do it and, and, and rejoice in it. Uh, Lord, if it requires lifestyle changes, those are hard to do. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you would uh, give them the strength and the courage and the faith to get it done. Forgive us where we fail, Lord. We, all of us have failed our children. We will fail them in the future. Lord, don't hold it against them. Don't hold against them our rebellion or our ignorance. Lord, we pray for their salvation. I pray for every child that is associated with this class, no matter how old they are, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and all those things. I pray in the name of Jesus you'd have mercy on their souls and help these parents and grandparents do everything they can to point them in the right direction. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.